What's going on everyone? My name is Evan Jemnikar and I'm the Daily Dino Guy. One question that I get asked a lot is if Jurassic Park could actually happen. A while ago, I did a video about how Isla Nublar would have been too hot and too humid for any dinosaur to survive it. But if Isla Nublar was not a good location for dinosaurs to live in, what would be? In this video, I'm going to be breaking down the best locations to open up a Jurassic Park. A lot of these locations might surprise you. So let me know in the comments whether you agree or disagree and why. So if you wanna know how we can find the temperature and precipitation data for the environments of these dinosaurs, go check out my previous video. I break down how we get the data and what that data looks like for all the dinosaurs in the Jurassic Park movies. But in trying to pick a better Jurassic Park location, there's one really big problem. Many of the dinosaurs featured in the movies lived in radically different environments around the world. What's more, they lived in different time periods when the climate was different for each dinosaur. Even though T-Rex and Parasaurolophus both lived in North America, they're separated by millions of years. So they don't share a lot of the same environmental factors. So to get around this problem, I did a cluster analysis, which looks at groupings in the data. This will help us see what prehistoric environments are most similar to each other, but more importantly, it shows which environments are significantly different. From those dinosaurs, the cluster analysis found that there were three distinct climate clusters. That means it would actually make more sense to make three different parks, each with their own unique dinosaur. This gets around dinosaurs living in environments that they're not actually adapted for. Once I got the range of climate data for each cluster, I then looked for modern environments that fit that range as close as possible. So starting off, our first cluster includes Parasaurolophus, Corythosaurus, and Compsognathus. The one thing that all these dinosaurs have in common is that their environments were semi-arid. This means that they received a little over one inch or three centimeters of rain a month. They're also relatively cold with winters dropping down into the freezing temperatures, but summers would also reach up into about 80 degrees Fahrenheit or 30 degrees Celsius. So based on that, a modern environment that is both cold and semi-arid would be Ulaanbaatar, Mongolia. Ulaanbaatar is the closest because it only rains about nine inches or 23 centimeters a year. It's also one of the coldest capital cities in the world. So it matches the climate data pretty well. Now you might be thinking that the cold would be too much for these dinosaurs to actually live in. But while these dinosaurs weren't specifically adapted for polar regions, they had many adaptations that made them suitable for living in colder environments. Environments. Parasaurolophus and Corythosaurus were both large and warm-blooded. Just like large mammals like elephants, they had a large volume to surface area ratio, which meant that they could produce a lot of heat to keep themselves warm. The smaller Compsognathus would have kept itself warm through different methods. This dinosaur is actually related to Cynoceropteryx, which was a dinosaur that we know was covered in fluffy down feathers. So unlike in the movies, the Compies would have been covered in feathers to help keep themselves warm. But what about the actual actual habitats. The steppes of Mongolia are made up of grasslands filled with feather grass and wormwood. The area also has some Douglas firs and ponderosa pines. This actually would have been the ideal environment for Parasaurolophus and Corythosaurus. These hadrosaurs had what's called a tooth battery. Instead of having separate teeth in sockets, like us, these dinosaurs had a giant block of teeth organized in a complex pattern. This meant that when one tooth fell out, there were still hundreds of teeth available for chewing. These kinds of teeth were perfect for chewing on tougher plant material like grass or pine straws. And while it would be much better to just provide the meat to the compies, if you need to locally source the food for these dinosaurs, there's plenty of small animals in the area like marmots or Mongolian larks. Our second cluster includes all of the dinosaurs from the Hell Creek Formation. This would include T-Rex, Triceratops, Pachycephalosaurus, and Ankylosaurus. It also includes some dinosaurs from ancient Mongolia like Velociraptor and Gallimimus. These dinosaurs all lived in environments that were semi arid and sometimes even arid. T-Rex and the other dinosaurs it lived alongside would have only received an average of half an inch or about one centimeter of rain a month. Velociraptor and Gallimimus received even less, roughly an eighth of an inch or three millimeters. All of these dinosaurs lived in environments with pretty moderate temperatures. Winters would dip below freezing, but summers were actually pretty nice, around 68 to 86 degrees Fahrenheit or 20 to 30 degrees Celsius. Based on the climate data, the 
best environment that would fit this data would be Denver, Colorado. Denver doesn't rain as much, considering that it lives in the southwestern US. And because of the higher elevation, it wouldn't get too hot for these dinosaurs. It's hypothesized that Velociraptor, Gallimimus, and possibly T-Rex were feathered. This meant that they could keep themselves insulated during the winter months, just like Comsognathus. As for Triceratops and Ankylosaurus, their large size would have kept them warm, just like the Hadrosaurs. But for Pachycephalosaurus, it's not quite clear how it would keep itself warm. It was warm-blooded, and while we don't have any evidence, it may have been covered in some type of filament. This is hypothesized because of an ancient relative called Cetacosaurus, which had hair-like quills on its tail. So Pachycephalosaurus may have had these hair-like quills on its tail as well, but we don't know for sure. But as far as the actual environment goes, it's kind of a mixed bag. The dinosaurs of the Hell Creek would probably fit in pretty well in Denver. By the time these dinosaurs evolved, their environments would have been filled with many of the major plant types that make up today's environments. While there were no massive grasslands, grass as a type of plant had evolved at this point. Flowering and fruit-bearing trees had also evolved at this time and were beginning to replace some of the conifers in forests. So you wouldn't need to change much for these dinosaurs at all, given the diversity of plant life. However, Velociraptor and Gallimimus both come from desert environments that coincidentally have the same climate data. Velociraptor in particular is known to have prowled sand dunes in order to search for prey. So for these dinosaurs, it would probably make sense to make a special enclosure that looks like a desert or an oasis environment. Before we continue, I wanna take a moment to thank the amazing people that make these videos possible, my daily Dino Direct members. Thank you so much for your support and passion for paleontology. Because of you, this channel is able to put out videos that are as understandable and as accessible as possible. If you wanna help support this channel and take your dino knowledge to the next level, then you should consider joining Daily Dino Direct. You'll get early access to these YouTube videos and you'll get exclusive masterclass lectures. So go to my website and sign up. And our last cluster includes all of the dinosaurs of the Morrison Formation. These include Brachiosaurus, Stegosaurus, and Ceratosaurus. In this cluster was also Dilophosaurus, Momentisaurus, Spinosaurus, and Pteranodon, even though it wasn't a dinosaur. These dinosaurs all lived in arid to semi-arid environments like the last cluster, so they didn't receive a whole lot of rain throughout the year. But these dinosaurs lived in much hotter environments. Many of these dinosaurs would have been used to summers reaching over 104 degrees Fahrenheit or 40 degrees Celsius. Of all the dinosaurs that could survive on Isla Nublar, these might be the best dinosaurs. This is because Isla Nublar, where Jurassic Park is located, is in the equator, where temperatures like these are very common. However, it still wouldn't be the best location because Isla Nublar is humid as opposed to arid. Therefore, the best modern environment for these dinosaurs would probably be be Riyadh, Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia is an extremely hot and dry desert landscape, so it would fit this climate data pretty well. The reason dinosaurs this big wouldn't overheat in a desert environment like this is partially due to their air sacs. Like birds, dinosaurs had specialized lungs that had several chambers that would store air throughout the breathing cycle. While this made them more efficient breathers, this extra air in their body also helped keep them cool. However, out of all the dinosaurs in this cluster, Dilophosaurus is the only dinosaur that actually lived in a desert environment. So this dinosaur would fit right in without any changes. But all the other dinosaurs lived in totally different biomes. For starters, Spinosaurus lived along coastal tidal flats and large rivers, similar to modern day mangrove forests. And lots of recent research actually shows it was at least partially aquatic. It would have used a giant paddle tail to swim around and use its large jaws to feed on giant fish. Pteranodon similarly would have lived on the coast of the Western Interior Seaway, which would have cut through North America during the late Cretaceous. So a barren desert would not be ideal for these dinosaurs. Instead, they would need a special enclosure that featured large bodies of water for fishing. Now, Brachiosaurus, Ceratosaurus, Stegosaurus, and Mementisaurus all lived in floodplain environments. On the outskirts of these rivers and floodplains would have been forests filled with cycads and conifers. So the enclosure of these dinosaurs would probably need to be heavily modified to include rivers and also drought resistant trees. And there you have it. Those would be the best locations for a modern day Jurassic Park. Really the only places that would be good for dinosaurs to live in would be the poles or the equator, which is where Isla Nublar is located. Besides that, 
There are many places on Earth that could theoretically support dinosaurs. If you made it this far into the video, then you probably love dinosaurs as much as I do. If that's true, then you should sign up for my newsletter. Every month, I gather the cutting edge research on dinosaurs and I send it to you absolutely free. Go to my website and sign up. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you never miss an in-depth discussion on dinosaurs. And don't forget to check out Daily Dino Guy on social media for even more fascinating dinosaur facts. Until next time, keep exploring the ancient past with me, Daily Dino Guy.